Good morning and welcome to Daily Morning Prayer. This is for Thursday, September 17th. Uh, we're continuing out of Common Prayer, a liturgy for ordinary radicals. And we begin with a commemoration of Hildegard of Bingen. Hildegard was sent to the convent at the age of eight. She lived, uh, was born in 1098 and died 1179. And it was there that she learned to read scripture, pray, and chant. Even as a child, she experienced supernatural religious visions in which she saw things invisible to others, foretold the future, and was filled with the luminosity she later called the reflection of the living light. At age 38, she became abbess of the Benedictine community in which she was raised, and five years later received her call to prophesy when she saw a fiery light that infused her heart and mind with knowledge. She finally was able to understand her visions as a means of divine revelation and began to write extensively about them. Her term for the grace of God inherent in all things was veriditas, or greenness, endearing her and our generation to followers of creation spirituality. Hildegard's holistic approach to God and humanity is relevant today, particularly to those longing for wholeness and healing for all of creation. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Our song for this morning is, We Are Marching in the Light of God. 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 We are marching. We are marching. Ooh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, we are marching, who we are marching in the light of God. Your word is in all the world. It flashes out in every creature. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 89, verses 5 through 8. The heavens bear witness to your wonders, O Lord, and to your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the gods? God is much to be feared in the counsel of the holy ones, great and terrible to all those around him. Who is like you, Lord God of hosts? O mighty God, your faithfulness is all around you. Your word is in all the world. It flashes out in every creature. Our Old Testament reading continues out of Hosea chapter 10, verses 1 through 15. Israel is a luxuriant vine that yields its fruit. The more his fruit increased, the more altars he built. As his country improved, he improved his alt pillars. Their heart is false. Now they must bear their guilt. The Lord will break down their altars and destroy their pillars. For now they will say, we have no king, for we do not fear the Lord. And a king, what could he do for us? They utter mere words. With empty oaths they make covenants. So litigation springs up like poisonous weeds in the furrows um, of the field. The inhabitants of Samaria tremble for the calf of Bethaven. Its people shall mourn for it, and its idolatrous priests shall wail over it, over its glory that has departed from it. The thing itself shall be carried to Assyria as tribute to the great king. Ephraim shall be put to shame, and Israel shall be ashamed of his idol. Samaria's king shall perish like a chip on the face of the waters. The high places of Evan, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. Thorn and thistle shall grow up on their altars. They shall say to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. Since the days of Gibeah you have sinned, O Israel, there they have continued. Shall not war overtake them in Gibeah? I will come against the wayward people to punish them, and nations shall be gathered against them when they are punished for their double iniquity. 
Ephraim was a trained heifer, they loved to thresh, and I spread her fair neck. But I will make Ephraim break the ground. Judah must plow, Jacob must harrow for himself. Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap steadfast love. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, that he may come and rain righteousness upon you. You have plowed wickedness, you have reaped injustice, you have eaten the fruit of lies. Because you have trusted in your power and in the multitude of your warriors, therefore the tumult of war shall rise against your people and all your fortresses shall be destroyed, as Shalman destroyed Beth Arbel on the day of battle, when mothers were dashed with their children. Thus it shall be done to you, O Bethel, because of your great wickedness. At dawn the king of Israel shall be utterly cut off. Our New Testament reading continues out of Matthew chapter 8, verses 28 through 34. When Jesus came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes, the two demoniacs coming out of the tombs came to meet him. They were so fierce that none could pass that way. And suddenly they shouted, What have you to do with us, Son of God? Why have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a large herd of swine was feeding at some distance from them. The demons begged him, If you cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. And Jesus said to them, Go. So they came out and entered the swine, and suddenly the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and perished in the water. The swine herds ran off, and on going into the town, they told the whole story about what had happened to the demoniacs. Then the whole town came to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their neighborhood. Your word is in all the world. It flashes out in every creature. Hildegard of Bingen wrote, We shall awaken from our dullness and rise vigorously toward justice. If we fall in love with creation deeper and deeper, we will respond to its endangerment with passion. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, when you invited Adam to name the animals, you invited us all to participate in your creative work. Teach us to rejoice in your creation and assist in its care, that we, your humble creatures, may in all things give you praise. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.